Hello and welcome back to another video. We actually have a couple of great videos coming up about the history of the web. And you might be asking again, come on, let's get to coding. But this is really important because we need to understand what problems we had in the past and how we found solutions to those problems and where we are at now. We need to understand what this whole thing of being a web developer means and what problems we're solving and what we did in the past and what we do today. So today we're going to talk about Tim Berners-Lee, the person who invented the World Wide Web in 1989. And I have a picture of him right here. And we're going to talk about him because he's the first web developer. And in order to explain that concept, we need to make a distinction between the internet and the World Wide Web. I have this website that I'll share in the links uh, below. It's really, really good if you kind of want to get a history lesson. But essentially, the internet started off with the ARPANET in 1969, basically a military project, and it was more of a test. It connected a few universities such as Utah, UCLA, and throughout the 70s, the 80s, it kept growing. But there was one problem that they had, and that was essentially for the academics, they needed a way to share documents. And up until the World Wide Web existed, the internet was there, but it was really, really hard for computers to communicate with each other, to share academic papers between each other. Most of the time, each computer had their own way of doing things. You can think of this as languages. So it's kind of like communicating with people from different countries and a language that you don't know. Yeah, sure, you can make it work, but it's very, very difficult. So that was the problem. And Tim Berners-Lee, what he did, and he was working at CERN at the time, he actually created the World Wide Web. And what the World Wide Web is, it's the www that we see whenever we type in google.com over here, is essentially a common language that computers can speak with the World Wide Web saying, hey, from now on, everybody, if we want to communicate together, if we want to share images or if you want to share files, let's just have this agreed upon language, agreed upon protocol in order to share these documents together. So that's what it is. The servers, the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, the browsers all work on top of the World Wide Web. So you can think of it as the internet is your phone and the World Wide Web is Instagram that runs on your phone. So it's essentially a decentralized application. Now, how was Tim Berners-Lee the first web developer? He actually created the first browser and the first server. And later on, we're actually gonna talk about what he did with the files over here as well, but he created the very, very first server and web browser, but also the first website. And they actually still have a copy of it. This is the very first website ever. And it's from 1991, and this is what it looked like. He created this ability for people to communicate and link to other documents so that we have this growing knowledge base of the world. In the next lesson, we're going to be talking about the history of these files, what they mean, what problem they solved, and how they came to be. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. And welcome back. In the last section, we talked about the World Wide Web and the internet and what the differences were. And then I promised you that we'll finally talk about some HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So I've been vaguely referencing these files and just told you that they're simple text files for now, but what are they specifically? Well, initially, if you remember, we had Tim Berners-Lee who created the very first website. And this website uses HTML. And HTML, that's the first file over here, is a way for us to just write text on website. And these texts on websites can also have these things called hyperlinks that can link to other parts of the website. So that's what happened in 1991. 1991, we had a way for us to share documents. And this can link to another website, another file, another research paper. But as you can see, it wasn't the prettiest. So in 1995, 1996, two technologies came into being. One was CSS and one is JavaScript. Now, what did they allow you to do? Well, CSS solved the problem of, well, this is nice and all, but it wouldn't be nice if we had some visual aspects. We can toy around with this website and make it look pretty. 
And then JavaScript said, well, you know, ideally we'll be able to have something like this website where, you know, I can click over here, I can shop now, I can put in my credit card and get these fancy slippers and I can do all this interactive things with my website. So let's play around with this and try and incorporate from this basic HTML file to add some CSS and JavaScript to this page. The way we're going to do that is we're going to go into View, Developer, and Developer Tools. So you might remember this from our previous lessons. So once you click on that, you'll get this pop up at the bottom of the screen. For some of you, it might be on the right side, but uh, it doesn't matter. You'll get both things. And we've seen this before. And if you look at the top over here, it says HTML. And that's it. HTML is this. It's this file that has this weird syntax that describes how this web page should look in text. So you can see over here, it says the World Wide Web. These are just text. On the right side over here, you'll see something called styles. So styles will actually let you add styles to the website, as the name suggests. And that's what CSS is. If we click on HTML here, and actually, let's click on body. Without knowing any CSS or anything, if we define something like color, semicolon, and then let's go blue, it changes the text color to blue. Chrome lets you play around with websites and actually injects some CSS into this HTML. Without knowing any CSS, we can kind of play around, type in a letter, and it will have a drop down. So let's see over here if we can do background color. Let's make it, I'm going to press tab. I'm going to do red. Make the website really, really, well, frankly, pretty ugly. But that's CSS right here. We've just added some CSS to this basic website. Let's turn this red color off because. It is not pretty. OK, so HTML, text and links, CSS, pretty colors. Now, how can we add some JavaScript? So remember, we have three files over here. JavaScript came along and said, these are great. You know, We have these beautiful text websites that link to other pages. And we have CSS that can make websites really, really pretty. But would it be nice to have some interactivity, to have drop down menus, to make websites like they are now, interactive. We can actually do this, again, with the developer tools. If you click on console over here, without knowing any bit of JavaScript, for now, we're just going to show you a simple JavaScript line. And we're going to type in alert. And let's say, hi there, exclamation marks. And I press Enter. And look at that. We just made the very first website ever made interactive with JavaScript. Now, obviously, this doesn't do anything, but hopefully this shows you where we were before in 1991 to where we are now. Websites that are interactive, full of JavaScript, CSS, and of course, HTML. See you in the next one. Bye-bye. And welcome back to the second web developer fundamental, another very important aspect of being a web developer. And that is the fact that we have multiple web browsers. Now, if you remember, Tim Berners-Lee, the inventor of the World Wide Web, created it because we needed a standard way to share documents amongst each other. And through HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, we're able to read these files and actually have beautiful websites. Now, when we send these files over, each of these browsers read the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and lay out the web page for us. But as you can see, each one of them is owned by a company and is a different browser. So that means they all have to agree on how they're going to read the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Because if they don't all agree, then, well, we need to create different files specific for each browser because each one of them has a different idea of what HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is. And you know what? When the World Wide Web got started, we had something called the browser wars where 
Each browser was kind of doing its own thing, implemented different things, and we still have that to this day to some extent. There is a governing body which kind of creates these standards now, but it is still a pain point for our developers where we need to figure out that whenever we send our files to the web browser, it all looks the same. And that is one of the biggest problems we have as developers. And you'll see tools later on in this course that try to solve that issue. But you'll always encounter this problem where we want to make sure that wherever your browser gets rendered, anybody can see your website. And not only that, we also have mobile phones now that access the internet. We have iPads. So now, not only do we have to worry about different browsers and whether they agree on what code works in each of these files, we also have to make sure that our websites look good on small screens, on big screens, on all sorts of different screens. And that is a very important concept, something that when you get to become a web developer, you'll encounter this problem where you have to test on each device, each browser to make sure everything works. And we'll use some tools that have developed over the years to solve these problems so that it's not as much as a pain point as it is or as it was. All right, one more lesson to go, and then we're going to get coding. See you on the other side. Bye-bye. And welcome back to the final lesson from the history of the web. I wanted to finish things off with this diagram that we've seen before in previous lessons with a few minor differences. And that is, I wanted to show you how web applications were built in the early 2000s. So they were built with technologies that we've come to familiarize ourselves with. We have HTML, CSS, JavaScript, but we also had jQuery. And jQuery was a library that allowed JavaScript to be written in a simple, clean way that allowed us not to worry too much about working in one browser than the other. It created this environment for JavaScript to flourish. But it is an outdated technology and there's better ways of doing things. So it is not used very often and you'll see it less and less in job postings. And then on the back end, we have the LAMP stack. And that stands for Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. And in those days, backend developers used PHP to write files that allowed us to have logic on the servers. And then we had Apache. So if you ever use something like HostGator and you had to log into cPanel or any of those very common hosting platforms, most likely they're running Apache server. And what it is, it's a software that really efficiently serves up files. And PHP is a language that it's still being used today and Facebook actually uses it, but that's because their website was built in the early 2000s. It is now a very unpopular, let's say, language in terms of growth and job opportunities. Then we also had MySQL, which it's still being used. But again, if you're looking to get hired, you want to look for skills that are highly employable, people are looking for them, and there are still very few developers that know it really well. Well, that's what we're learning in this course. In this course, we're going to learn HTML5, CSS3. We're going to learn JavaScript. We're going to learn React, probably the biggest library for JavaScript. And we're going to learn about Node servers, Node.js, Express.js. We're going to learn about Postgres, SQL, and also MongoDB. So we're learning all these things in order for us to build clean, fast, and bug-free web applications so that we can stand on shoulders of giants and create wonderful applications that we're proud of. So get excited. All the theory stuff we're done with, we're going to start coding. We're going to start off with HTML, then get into CSS, and then finally JavaScript and React. And don't worry, we'll get to the back end as well. So I'll see you in the next section. Bye-bye.